from the Gilgit Theatre London, please welcome Jeff Green. <laughs> well, we've got Muppets as well, haven't we? <laughs> Good. Come on that side as well. You can start telling each other to like piss off. <laughs> How is everybody? Okay? Yes. Good. I've said completely the wrong thing when I was coming into the West End. I hope I don't repeat myself tonight. There was a chap selling big issues and he came up to me, he went, big issue, mate. And I went, oh, yes, okay. Hmm. Thank you very much. He said, it's me last one. I said, oh, you can go home now, can't you? <laughs> oh, no. I do apologise. <laughs> you caught me by surprise. It's a lovely snorkel parka you're wearing. <laughs> they love a snorkel parka, don't they? The homeless. And fair play, what a great coat that was. The coat that used to zip up like that. <laughs> you remember, you needed a friend to do it the rest of the way. Another six foot of zip and I'll be there. It was like looking through a tunnel, wasn't it? With a load of hair around the end of it. <laughs> Bit early for that joke. <laughs> take it nice and slow, Jeff. <laughs> Did you know snorkel parkers are actually designed to kill children? Did you know that? They were, because by the time you managed to check if there was anything coming along the road, <laughs> with your bloody coat on right up, nothing over there, are you? Better check over here. All clear, I think I can bang! It was like a milk float, right? <laughs> it managed to travel two miles and kill you, and there was a hook on the hood, do you remember? The bully hook, I used to call it. It was so the bullies could drag you around the playground, get your pocket money off you, and you stay warm and dry. <laughs> I love this coat. It was a two or three thousand pockets in a snorkel park. <laughs> it was bloody pockets everywhere. They go, have you got that money I owe you? Yes, certainly. <laughs> there was even a pocket here, wasn't there? For pens. <laughs> the bloke who designed, he had all this room, he went, no, 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 here. <laughs> right in the crack of the elbow. <laughs> so when you put a pen in, you couldn't bend your arm. <laughs> You walk into school going, yes, I have a biro in there, yes. No, I don't want a taxi, thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely orange lining to show the dirt up. Oh, you couldn't. <laughs> there were great threads, as they say. I've been doing some weird gigs, did some gigs in Australia just recently. Any Australians in tonight? Yes. <laughs> well played, mate, on your own, I do believe. <laughs> did you think everyone was going to join in? You go, yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> So one person makes a noise and nobody else joins in, you go, oh, bloody hell, why didn't I do that? It's like when you're at a disco and all the music stops and you're left saying, I'd shag her. <laughs> Who turned the music off? Bouncers, throw me out and kick the shit out of me. <laughs> I deserve it. Australia's a beautiful place, isn't it? I was thinking, you know, when I went there, I thought, what a historical cock-up. We sent all the bloody convicts over there and we're all left bloody shivering in this country. That showed them. <laughs> we'll be doing that again. <laughs> we should have given them the keys to England and us lot gone over there. We're going, don't do it again, all right? <laughs> You'll find the flu pills and the umbrellas under the stairs, OK? <laughs> we'll be back in 200 years to beat you at cricket, all right? <laughs> I did some water skiing when I was in Australia. No, I never. I did some colonic irrigation when I was in Australia. Because <laughs> that's all it is, a very cheap form of colonic irrigation. Because if you've ever done it, I was going around the harbour like this, you see. Because I couldn't get up, you know. I kept trying, I kept falling on my bloody face. I thought, sod it, I've paid for the petrol. You're more than welcome to drag me around the harbour like this. Getting up's overrated. But you don't realise, if you don't stand up, you're pulling water across your bum at 30 miles an hour. You're filling up from the inside. You know, you're there waving. Everyone on the beach is like, ah, he's in for a shock. <laughs> it's true, you are. You go to the toilet, you're an hour. You're sat on it, water, water, water. You go, ah! I don't know whether to wipe or shake. You come out the loo a broken man, you're like, oh my good God, oh my good God. More water skiing? No, thank you, no. <laughs> I've had me fill. 
in a manner of speaking. In the end, I let go of the ropey thing, because I was trying to say to the man in the boat, slow down, you maniac, I'm blacking out. But he probably couldn't hear me, always thinking, pommy bastard. I'll wait till water comes out of his nose, maybe I'll slow down a little bit. So I thought, get, let go of the ropey. So I let go, and I thought I might glide gracefully into the water. But you don't, you bloody shoot forward. <laughs> I went about 40 feet and I did a crotch flop. <laughs> a crotch flop. I went, <clears throat> Everyone on the beach went. <gasps> there was kids being sick. <laughs> and I knocked all the creases out of me scrotum. I did. My scrotum is really smooth now. It's like a billiard ball in my underpants. I try and sort of scrunch it up when I'm on my own, you know. Back comb it. I've got two lumps behind my ears as well, which I'm very concerned about. I've got to see a physiotherapist. She's going to try and bring them back down for me. It's a great place. This guy said to me, this Australian, me, me guardian angel, he said, hey, Jeff, do you want to come and see some... Aboriginal cave paintings. I was like, ah, yeah. He says, all right, he says, come with me. It's a bit of a walk, but you'll be all right. I thought, bit of a walk. What's that? 20 minutes? Four hours. <laughs> In Australia, a bit of a walk. If you ever go and there's a bit of a walk, go, fuck off. <laughs> That's four hours. It was uphill. In 30 degrees heat, I was only in flip-flops. <laughs> I was not a great ambassador for the British nation. <laughs> Are we not bloody there yet? I want to go home. And when we got there, they were shit. <laughs> they were. Aboriginal cave paintings, two circles on a cave wall. I was so pissed off. <laughs> As you would be yourself, I was like, is this some kind of bloody joke? <laughs> I've eaten my own body weight in gnats. <laughs> two circles that you wouldn't even have these on your fridge in England. <laughs> I'm telling you. If your kid brought them home from school, you go, oh yes, very nice. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Our lad's simple. <laughs> it's the remedial class for that young man. <laughs> it is. And there was, a, there was a spider on the cave wall. And uh, I know people say about, oh, Australia spiders, but until you see it, you don't realize. And it was about the size of my hand, and I, I, went, I wet myself. I was, and, and the guy went, hey, don't go near that. I went, yeah, like I was bloody going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to get him. <laughs> I've got him. Oh, he's a strong one, isn't he? He's feisty. All he needs is a bit of tender love and care. They call me Spider Dundee. <laughs> Don't go near that. <laughs> My pants like that. <laughs> he says they've got a sting on them. I thought, what's he need a bloody sting for? <laughs> he could have waited till I walked past, tripped me up, punched me in the face, <laughs> and dragged me off into the bushes. <laughs> Just left a pair of bloodied flip-flops. <laughs> Was there a whinging palm stood here? <laughs> so I, 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 you do these things, that's what I was thinking to myself. I thought, why do you put yourself through bloody water skiing and stupid things? It's because you want to you prove to everyone you're still young, do you know what I mean? They go, do water skiing, yeah, all right. Are we all sort of roughly my age, 18, 19, yeah. <laughs> Age creeps up on you, that's what I think. You think, oh, I'm really young. Then you'll catch yourself tucking your shirt into your underpants. <laughs> you go, oh dear. That is really comfortable. <laughs> oh dear. I feel safe and secure. <laughs> You're in restaurants. No chips. Do you do a jacket potato? <laughs> no. Do you want to be old? Do you want to be young and stupid? You start to like your mum and dad again. That's another thing. As you get into your 30s, because when you're in your teens, you bloody hate your parents, don't you? Which is fair enough, because they hate you. <laughs> it's a sort of mutual hatred thing. I always think if you've got teenage children, you can really take the piss out of them, go, I'll pick you up from the school disco, then turn up in pyjamas. <laughs> and there's your mum there in a boob tube and hot pants. <laughs> No, we're not leaving. We're coming in and having a bit of a dance. 
You're bloody not. <laughs> Is that your mum and dad, Jeff? No. <laughs> I'm an orphan. <laughs> but I will be in about ten minutes. <laughs> but it goes from that, you know, to being in your thirties going, Mum, I would love to come caravanning with you. <laughs> ten B? Ooh. <laughs> no, I'll bring a packed lunch. I'm not paying cafe prices. <laughs> I hate it. I hate getting older. Oh, I try and fight it, you know. I like to run into beauty clinics and go, do you wax arses? <laughs> Who was that idiot? <laughs> or when I'm on a train, you know, and, and two trains are going out the train station and my train just gets a little bit ahead of the next train. I like to go to the window and go, yeah. <laughs> we won. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> it is. It's, they say about old people, don't they? They say old people... They walk into rooms, you know, they, with their memory, and they go, Oh, what did I come in here for? I think, well, I do that now. <laughs> well, it'll be like when I'm bloody 70. I'll be waking up going, Who am I? <laughs> what are these? <laughs> Get them off me! <laughs> Get them off me! <laughs> You're mental. You used to do that, revise for your exams the night before, then have to walk to the exam with it all balanced in the top of your head like that. Don't anybody nudge me. I've got two years of O-level maths in here. <laughs> I've tried to learn it in half an hour. Make way, slacker coming through. Make way, family disappointment coming through to fail his examinations. Make way, McDonald's burger flipper coming through. You got four Fs. Well, I was clearly pushed in the back. <laughs> It was all shook up, didn't stand a chance. <laughs> it's weird. I said, because I'm an engineer, I did engineering at college. Oh, bloody, what a, what a bad move that was. Oh, they, you never get off with girls if you're an engineer, do you? Oh, they always want to go out with arty students, don't they? There's all these arty people going, oh, Milton and Shakespeare, and girls going, oh, you're sexy. <laughs> and I'd be there going, has anyone read Fluid Flow by Coulson and Richardson? <laughs> yeah. I think the wankers are in that room over there, mate. <laughs> You go and find yourself dancing with 19 blokes, you know. <laughs> Engineer? Yeah. <laughs> this party's shit. Should we all go to Tandy? Yeah. <laughs> Tandy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tandy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who needs girls? We've got wires. <laughs> yes. I was terrible. I always try and put stuff up. I'd be there going, I can't revise with shoes this dirty. What am I thinking of? I've got socks to pair. I can't be revising. Things for the future. And the same at Christmas, isn't it? You, like your mum, she always sort of manages to get her Christmas presents. You know, a bit at the time and come Christmas Day, it's all there. You know, I'd love to be like that. Or I could be as I usually am, four o'clock, Christmas morning at the garage. <laughs> with me list. Yeah, my mum's unwrapping two-stroke oil. <laughs> my dad's going, ooh, a Ginster's pie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> I thought it's what you wanted, Dad. <laughs> it is bonkers. I'm just going to get a little drink of water because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm as dry as a nun's nonny, I think is the, <laughs> I think is the expression. <laughs> I went to the gym as well, tried to go to the gym. It's, it's, a sp it's a shame you can't go once to the gym, don't you think? And you go, oh, that'll do me till I'm about 60. <laughs> they go, they we want you there three times a week. I thought, well, I don't do anything three times a week. <laughs> That's not strictly true, of course. <laughs> I was all right. I'd made a big effort as well. I thought, I'm going to the gym. Make a big effort, Joe. Joe, fuck it now. Hey. What was in that fucking water? <laughs> Make a big effort, Steve. <laughs> it's terrible when the biggest laugh of the night comes when I fuck up, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't you think? What was the show like? Well, it had one very, very good piece in it. Sad thing is, I'm going to probably keep that in. <laughs> well, I've always got the Joe banker, of course. <laughs> Up me sleeve. <laughs> if I get too professional for you, can you let me know, by the way? <laughs> I, had, I was trying to make a big effort at the gymnasium.
gymnasium, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and I've been up all night, really, yeah. <laughs> Unstitching me BAGA badges off me little short. <laughs> and I was sewing them onto me big short, you know. <laughs> I thought, I want a bit of respect at the gym. I go, are you a gym member? No, but feast your eyes on that. <laughs> it's a BAGA gold medal. It involved the handstand and the forward roll. <laughs> Which, eight years of age in your underpants, is bloody hard. <laughs> Respect you. <laughs> now, I, I turned up to the gym, I said, uh, Hello, mate, can I join the gym, please? He says, have you been before? I said, no, I haven't. No, he says, OK, bit of advice for you. Sod off. <laughs> now, that's not fair. This leotard cost me a fortune. <laughs> he says, a bit of advice for you. He says, when you go into the gymnasium, he says, you go in there, you start on the small weights, and you build yourself up. So being a man, I completely bloody ignored that. <laughs> small weights, my arse. <laughs> Grabbed the biggest weights I could find. I was going, who do you think I am? Curly what? <laughs> and he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, don't you think you should warm up? I went, get lost. <laughs> Warming ups for women and children. <laughs> Next day, couldn't move. <laughs> I sort of got out of my bed like that. All I could do was make involuntary vowel sounds. I was going, ooh, ee, ooh, ah. Ooh, ooh, ee, ah, ooh. Give us hand with this cup of tea, will you? <laughs> you to be able to pick it up. They were going, you were lifting weights of treat yesterday. That was bloody yesterday, wasn't it? Today I've got flu in my arms. <laughs> no one else, just in my arms. Right, I'm going to have a go at a fack. I don't be able to pick it up. I'm going to have to try and smoke it out the ashtray. <laughs> it's horrible. It's, it, they, and people love telling you what it is, because you're walking around, ooh, 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 and they go, oh, you know what that is, don't you? I go, yes, I've overdone it. <laughs> it's lactic acid. That is lactic acid in your body, that is, that's causing that. I went, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I wouldn't want a glass of that in my face. <laughs> Down a dark alley. <laughs> Ow! Eee, oh, oh. And it lasts for days, doesn't it? Not one day, three or four days, it's still... Pay you look alright, no one are running for the bus, you're like... <laughs> Is that a 73? <laughs> oh, ee, oh, ah, oh. You've got things to do, you know, post office, imagine walking in there, some young desperado's holding it up. You know, you walk in, uh, you go, stick your hands up. Tough guy, eh? <laughs> no? Lactic acid? <laughs> I've been to the gym, haven't I? I couldn't pick a cup of tea up yesterday. I shouldn't be out. I didn't warm up, did I? I didn't listen to the bloke. He threw me out, banned me. Oh, I'll go and lie over there. Oh, thank you very much. You won't get any funny business out of me, mate. I can barely get my underpants on. <laughs> I couldn't take my stamps off, I was getting a bit heavy now. <laughs> Have you seen a woman walk through the gym? Ah, oh, the place erupts, doesn't it? So these blokes go, ee, a woman walks past it. <laughs> Even the cleaners like that. Must think, women must think we're bloody nutters. <laughs> so I started watching it, I've had, I've had enough. I bought an exercise bike as well, because, well, I want somewhere to hang me clothes in a couple of weeks. <laughs> you know, the combined exercise bike and clothes horse. <laughs> That'll do me. Pedal your way to clean the laundry, thank you very much. <laughs> so, as I was watching, I watch now. I was, I tell you I was watching, I was watching the athletics. I'm, I'm knackered now, haven't I? Didn't warm up, did I? <laughs> Tomorrow morning, but ah, ooh, ooh, ooh. How was the gig? I overdid it, didn't I? <laughs> but I was, I was watching the athletics, and they had, um, they had the walking race on. And I was, oh, it's seven hours of thrilling, non-stop entertainment. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, they can't call that the bloody walking race, can they? Nobody walks like that. You never say, I'm just off to the shops. 
I'll be back in a minute. Anyone want a curly whirly? You only walk like that when you're about to shit yourself in public, don't you think? Don't you really? Look? Excuse me, I think I'm going to have a bit of an accident. I've eaten a sausage that wasn't cooked properly. I do hope they've got paper. And plenty of it. You ever had that? Been caught short in the middle of town, ran into the nearest McDonald's, and some pimply blokes there going, sorry, these toilets are for customers only. You, know you don't understand. <laughs> I'm not walking like this for laughs. You couldn't fit a credit card between the cheeks of my arse at the moment. <laughs> Get out of my way! <laughs> these toilets are for customers only. I'll break your bloody arms. You'll have more than burger wrappers to clear up. If you delay me, <laughs> it's a, throw him out the way. <laughs> Run into the toilet and, and, and you find one of those bloody toilet seats with a hinge missing. <laughs> I hate them, I do. <laughs> you don't realise till you put all your bloody weight on it, do you? You're like, ah, at last. Hey, up! <laughs> ah! I've got a blooming love bite on my arse now. <laughs> How am I going to explain that? Where'd you get the love bite? In a public toilet. <laughs> you don't understand, I was in with all the feminine hygiene products. <laughs> Let's not talk about feminine hygiene products. Actually, I tell you, I don't normally talk about this, but I was in the supermarket and I saw um, Lillette's, women's, obviously women's Lillette's. <laughs> Did you, Joe? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, dear. Women, Lilettes, yes. And, and, and it had on it, new, rounded shape. And I went, well, what was the old shape like? <laughs> I mean, I'm no expert, but if I had to make one, bloody rounded would be my first effort. <laughs> what I mean? What were they, star-shaped? <laughs> These women going, Oh, thank God for that! <laughs> They've rounded them off! <laughs> they finally got me letters. <laughs> oh. It's terrible. And, 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 and in the supermarket, family size, packs of condoms. You go, what? <laughs> Actually, you can get a condom now which plays a tune if they split. I don't know if you've heard, well, I don't know if you've heard them, but um, <laughs> heard of them. I guess the tune must be. Du -du -du -du. <laughs> du -du -du -du. You can get them with a verbal warning as well. I thought, oh, bloody hell, I wouldn't want two people shouting at me. To be... <laughs> Look, I am sorry. Look, I am sorry. Look, I am sorry. <laughs> anyway, I think there's a certain ten seconds. Most men would, wouldn't really. You'd try and muffle it, wouldn't you? Be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing short of an airbag. That's what men need. It splits and goes bang, and you fly out the bedroom window. <laughs> with your socks at the end of the bed. <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> well, that stopped him. <laughs> Briz, do you know what I was thinking to myself? I was watching the, um, I was watching this walking race and I thought to myself, they shouldn't have a walking race, so just, just pull my pants up. And <laughs> they should have a skipping race at the Olympics, shouldn't they? You know, not like that. Just not like, like this, Mark set, go. <laughs> Mark set, go. Because you got to places so much quick as a kid if you skipped, didn't you? <laughs> it's a shame it's not socially acceptable now, really. Didn't you? <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> Come on, love, we've got a train to catch. <laughs> Morning, officer. Morning. <laughs> Overslept. <laughs> Anyone seen a robber? <laughs> With his sergeant behind him like that. Sarge, when do I get a rope? When you get these, lad. <laughs> Skipping's great. Last time I skipped home, same for a lot of men, the last time you actually skip home is, is when you lose your virginity, isn't it? <laughs> but it, it's actually more like that. <laughs> yes! The genie is out the lamp. <laughs> I will never masturbate again. Wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
such rash promises. <laughs> Was it Claire Rayner says, most boys stop masturbating after 17. Although, well, I stop after one. <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> 17? Bloody Superman. <laughs> one big arm. <laughs> like a crab. Next Sunday at 10. An icon of the 80s loved by the young and the very, very old. I think the Penny Everett Show is the funniest show on television. Paramount presents, excuse me, the King Geek of video comedy, Fire March. I think he's the best looking man on the face of the earth. Kenny Everett is back on Paramount. I never miss it. Kenny Everett starts tomorrow at 11.30 on the Paramount Comedy Channel. Wow, look out! Yes! Mom! <laughs> Mom! Mom, Steve just asked me out. Email just in. Today, Kate was asked out on a hot date by Steve. Mom, Ooh. tell him he's reading my email. Lewis! But Paul suggests Steve must need glasses. <laughs> With Open, you can email, shop and bank through your TV 24 hours a day. Mom, 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 mom. To register for Open Email, press your interactive button now. Last year, there were 150,000 cases of divorce in the UK. However, not one involving a dog. Animal Planet. Animals are better than humans. Of course, there's always the exception. If you believe the nightmare was finished, Ow! you were right. There are certain rules to follow in order to survive a horror movie. Don't answer the phone. <laughs> you know where I am. You're behind the couch. Oh, don't run in the woods. I'm so scared right now. Because something out there is very scary. Scary movie. service stations. There's strength in numbers, especially when we work together. Now there's a way of shopping together. Let's buy it.com. As the number of buyers goes up, the price goes down and down. That's buyer power from Let's Buy It.com. We all get things cheaper when we buy in a group. Let's do it. Let's buy it dot com.
23rd this September on Paramount. It's true. There was that film, wasn't it? You remember the film Train Spotting? And the, uh, the quote from Train Spotting to get everybody in to see the film was Heroin, imagine your best ever orgasm, multiply it a thousand times, and you're still nowhere close. And I thought, well, think of the mess. <laughs> I shan't be trying heroin then. <laughs> oh, no wonder no they always look so bloody drawn. Hey. I do do heroin, yes. There is a bit of a side effect, yes. I don't really like to talk about it. I do steal for my habit, yes. I can afford the heroin, it's the £400 on Kleenex, obviously. I'm having a bit of trouble getting the money together for. I don't work, no. I can't get out of bed. I'm stuck to the bed. You need anyone dressed as a toga? I'm your man. So, I'd like to try heroin, I would. I wouldn't, I'd just say that to my mother to make us spit food 400. <laughs> that heroin looks good. <laughs> good shot, Mum, got to the end of the garden. <laughs> just, uh, damp, damp, damp. I would tell you my thing, but I think what I used to like, when I was young, I used to like uh, getting stoned, I used to like smoking a bit of dope. I used to love it. Me, me and my mate would have a, a spliff and a six pack. That's, well, that's not beer, that's petit for lose. <laughs> six pack. Ooh, strawberry and vanilla. <laughs> These are too small. <laughs> Do you know what I used to like? I used to bloody love Derry Lee cheese triangles as well. And they, I, I, if you see them now, they've got a bit of red string on them to help you open them, haven't they? God send. I used to be weeks trying to open them in the old days. You spend half your school trip trying to open one. <laughs> We'd go to Nosley Safari Park to be like, lions on that side, tigers on that, the whole bus would be like that. <laughs> so you say, look at the animals in a minute. <laughs> I'm just trying to open this Dairy Lee cheese triangle. Oh, shit, I'm going to have to suck it out the foil. Who <laughs> be fillings? But they make everything difficult to open. You get a videotape from the garage, you're supposed to peel it off like a cigarette packet, but if that little plastic thing breaks off, you're knackered. <laughs> you're trying to tear the thing up. Cellophane sock. The film started, you're going, hey, wait for me, wait for me. <laughs> well, my film start nine minutes in, I'm going, hang on. And the voice of reason comes on from the couch going, do you want some scissors? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm a man, aren't I? I'm genetically programmed to try and tear this open till I lose me bloody temper. <laughs> Kick the telly, chuck the video out the window, and then sulk for two hours <laughs> until someone apologises to me. <laughs> I'm a man. <laughs> Ow. 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 <laughs> Men can lose a temper with anything, don't you think? Oh, it's just, you know, two minutes, come, come, boo. <laughs> poo. Even setting the alarm clock, you can lose your temper. You just don't poo. You know, with the, the digital, I've got a digital alarm clock with the fast and the slow buttons. Because I always try and use the fast button, you know. I'm like, ah, eight o'clock on fast. Ooh, quarter past eleven. <laughs> Bastard. You've got to be quick on this thing, haven't you? Half past ten, shit. <laughs> Use the slow button. Get lost. <laughs> Only bit of excitement I have in my life these days. <laughs> 9.30. That'll do. <laughs> I'll just tell them I've been to the dentist. Forgot to mention it. <laughs> Even CFAX. You can lose your temper watching CFAX. You'll be sat there going, oh yes, I'll, I'll have 119, I think. She'll go, 119. It goes, 116, 117, 118, 600. <laughs> What about my page? <laughs> then it gives you your page, you start reading it, it flips to another page. I hadn't finished reading that yet. You read the next page really, really quickly, you're spooked, you know. You get to the end, it waits 20 minutes. <laughs> Tell he's trying to piss me off. It's true. But I did, I used to like, I didn't like getting too stoned, that was the thing with me. For people who don't know, because I've always thought I've got the brain of Keith Richard, but the body of Cliff Richard. 
<laughs> my brain says, go for it, and my body says, I've a bit of a lie down. <laughs> it's terrible. It's true, I, I, there's a night, for people who don't know, there's a nice stoned, I like that. But you can go beyond that into the really bloody horrible stone, which I didn't care for. You know, the bit, the bit where you've lost all your confidence. You know, I'd be in my flat going, hmm, I need some tea bags, but I'm a little bit frightened. Hmm, I had to smoke the lot, didn't I? And now I'm in the shit. You walk past the mirror, crikey, where's all the blood gone from me face? <laughs> oh, it's in my eyes, thank God for that. <laughs> for a minute I thought I'd fucking bled to death. <laughs> right, how many people have died of dope? None. Shit, I'll be the first. <laughs> the first man to die of marijuana. All my friends will take the piss out of me. I'll be cringing on a cloud going, it was strong stuff and I hadn't eaten. <laughs> Give me a break. But well, me and my friend, we would love it. We would get stoned and we would, and we would sit and giggle and we would say to each other, one would say like, hey, should we put things in our pockets? And I'd go, yeah. <laughs> so we'd put things in our pockets and we'd run around chuckling away to each other and putting detritus and rubbish and anything we could find into our pockets. And then we would walk around Chester City Centre about two o'clock in the morning, wait for the police to stop us and ask us to empty our pockets. <laughs> Which we thought was hilarious. <laughs> you two, come over here. Certainly. <laughs> What's in your pockets? <clears throat> Goldfish. <laughs> Pickled onion. <laughs> Socks. Fish fingers. You some kind of dickhead. <laughs> Very much so, sir, yeah. <laughs> What's that inside your coat? Slippers. Mum's slippers. In the wagon, certainly. <laughs> Think a magician's ever been stopped by the police and asked to empty his pockets? <laughs> no, fine. He'd be there all night, wouldn't he? Like, ladder. <laughs> dove. Flowers. For you? <laughs> well, so now, drinking's my thing now. I must prefer drinking the old liquid imp. You know, ooh, bit of that and off you go. A couple of things I don't like with drinking. One is, one is the bruises. You seem to acquire. <laughs> Where did the bloody bruises come from? You have a party, you come home, you, you're covered in bloody bruises. You think I've only been to the party? Did I get a cab home or was I dragged naked? Did four dwarfs kick the shit out of me? Little bruises. Or, and they actually tell us a, a story of things, basically, that you've fallen asleep against during the course of the evening. You know, you're waking up and looking in the mirror, there's a bruise of an ashtray. On your face with Worthington's written back. <laughs> what was I up to? And the, and the other thing is the change. The bloody change you come home with after a night out. There's not a note on you. It's all coins of the realm, isn't it? It's ching, 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 ching. That's why drunks walk like this. It's a bloody change they've got on. Ching, ching, ching. There's packs of beggars behind you. Any spare change? You bloody know I have. You've just seen me leave that pub. It's because you need a note at the bar, isn't it? If you're, if you're at the spa, you need a note, you know. You're going, hey, mate, it's a bit of service. You've got a fiver in your hand. You certainly say, what would you like? You get nothing if you're like, ah, hey, mate, it's a bit of service. <laughs> hey, mate, bit of service. It's 2.32. <laughs> it's just right. <laughs> Piss off, pauper. I did, I still like drinking. That's the other thing I must say about just people, uh, finally on that, on the uh, Olympics and stuff. I know you shouldn't really laugh, but I do like the gymnastics. And I like it when the guy does a big run at the springboard and he bounces over it. He does a double somersault over the horse. And then something goes wrong because he falls flat on his face. And then he gets up and pretends nothing's happened. <laughs> I reckon I got away with that one. <laughs> they don't replay that in slow motion, the gold's mine. <laughs> Follow that, you bastards. <laughs> and that's another thing, isn't it, about getting older. If you notice this, your dad gets smaller. Have you noticed that? As you get, as, I, every time I go back to Chester, my dad has dropped a few inches. In a couple of years, I'll be like this. Have you met me, father? <laughs> this is him, yes. He came by pigeon. 
He's shrunk. Yes, he has shrunk. Go on, Dad. Mingle. <laughs> Make way. The little fella's coming through. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. I'm very old. It's weird, you know, your dad and your mum, because, like, my mum's 60 years of age. She's on hormone replacement therapy. She's in a bloody miniskirt, driving a sports car, going, hello, lads. <laughs> My dad's three foot nothing. I'm pissed off. <laughs> Izzy gets more miserable as he gets... He doesn't even say anything. I go, all right, Dad. He's like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dad. <laughs> I met him off the train once at Euston Station. I went, hello, Dad, how was your train journey? He went, have you ever been on a train? <laughs> I went, yeah. He went, it was like that. <laughs> you miserable git. <laughs> I did a gig in Leeds City Varieties as well. There's a, a, a theatre, Leeds City Varieties. Do you remember the, uh, the programme Good Old Days? The Good Old Days, is, they filmed it there. And I said, my dad phoned me up. He says, are you gigging, son? <laughs> I went, yes, I am. He says, where are you gigging then? I says, I'm, I'm at Leeds City Varieties. He went, no, I don't know that. I says, well, do you remember the good old days? There weren't no good old days. <laughs> it's a myth. <laughs> yes, he says, and he's so tight as well. He used to tell us when, when we were younger, when, when the ice cream van was coming around the houses, he told us if it was playing its chimes, that meant they'd ran out of ice cream. <laughs> Always making stuff, my dad. Do you know, if your dad would do that, he would never buy things. You know, he would like me say, hey, I'm not paying for a haircut, I'll cut your hair myself. Where's that steak knife? <laughs> do you know hairdressers actually only cut your hair to make it look good in a brown smock? Have you noticed that? <laughs> you take the smock off, it looks shit, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, very nice. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> you have to go out clubbing in a brown smock, don't you? <laughs> Yes, I've had the haircut, thank you. <laughs> and the bit I like is when the girl's washing your hair in the hairdressers. You're not supposed to like that, but I bloody love that idea. <laughs> you know when you're lying in that urinal for a one-legged man? <laughs> going, do you have conditioner? Oh, yes. <laughs> Fifty lots of conditioner for me, please. <laughs> Just keep washing me hair. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> was uncalled for. I thought that's what the smock was for. Modesty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> have a little bit of a... No, right. <laughs> it's time to have your hair cut. You know, thank you, but the fucking smock's like that. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, crikey. <laughs> well, a bit of artistic licence there, ladies. <laughs> in fact, it was probably a hollow. <laughs> Not a walnut in your pocket? No. <laughs> anyway, my daddy was always, always making things. He, we, he took us camping once, you know, nice cheap holiday. <laughs> and he, he, he says, we're all going camping. Oh, oh, great. He says, I tell you what, he says, you know these Calagas cookers? He says, I'm, I'm not buying a Calagas cooker, you know. I'm going to make one. <laughs> he says, you can't make one, Dad. I can. They charge the earth millets. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make one. So we brought this thing home from work and we looked at it and it was an abomination. <laughs> we were all very frightened of it. And my dad said to me, you can be in charge of lighting that when we go on holiday. <laughs> I went, oh, thanks. As eight years of age, he put me in the, in the tent. Well, I say tent, it was a washing line with a sheet over it. <laughs> I'm not buying a tent. I'm going to make one. We're only there two weeks. When he rains, every day. <laughs> so I'm in the tent, and my dad says to me, he says, there's a lighter, I'll go outside. He says, I'll turn the gas on. When the gas comes through, you light it. I'm like, right-o. So I'm stood there over this thing, shaking. And my dad says, I've turned the gas on. Has it come through? I said, well, Dad, yes, it has come through. But it's coming out of everywhere. <laughs> and I haven't turned anything on yet. Do, do you mind if I don't light it? And he come running and he went, you little bloody coward. Give me that lighter. He says, that's not leaking. He says, this is how you check for leaks. He got the lighter. He went, bink. He went, boom. <laughs> And a flame enveloped his whole face. And because it's your dad, you're not allowed to laugh. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> he turned to me, he blinked, his eyelashes fell to the floor. <laughs> How do I look? <laughs> like a new potato. 
Yes, Mum will be angry with you, won't she? What's your notice? Well, you have no eyebrows. <laughs> or hair. In fact, you have a face like a baboon's bottom, Father. It's terrible. For weeks, he had no eyelashes, no eyebrows. He was never, he was never startled nor angry. <laughs> He'd lost all expression on his face. You, just could, you couldn't work out if you were getting to him and you just had to wait until he'd come at you. Was, uh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> Put a bit of gaffer tape on your face, Dad. <laughs> Give us a bit of warning. <laughs> Let's go. Click. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's awful. It's, my mum and dad got divorced not long after that, I have to say. My parents have been married three times each. People say, are you from a broken home? I go, well, no, it was more of a derelict bomb site. To be fair. <laughs> it's weird if your parents get divorced. There's an interesting one, this, is, is that one of the kids uh, gets the man of the house speech. You know, it, there's a little speech when your, parent, when your mum and dad leave, the dad leaves, that one of the kids is, is ca called upon to be the, the new man of the house. And, and my dad sat me down. He decided it was me, don't know why. <laughs> and he sat me down. I was 10 years of age. And we could see it miles off, and he said, I, Son, I, I have to tell you, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, your mum and I are splitting up. I thought, who are you, the Beatles? <laughs> yes, we have irreconcilable musical differences, yes. <laughs> she likes Linda's phone, I like the ink spots. <laughs> Righto. He says, and I have to tell you now, lad, I want you to be the man of the house. You know, you've got to be the man of the house. And I was like, well, well are you sure, Dad? I mean, you know, you're a hard act to follow. <laughs> I'm not much of a drinker. I produce practically no phlegm in the mornings, you know that, don't you? I'm in a fart, but I'm not in your league. I don't mean that, son. I mean, you've got to protect your mum and your sisters now. I said, well, do your eyes deceive you? I'm four foot two. I weigh three stone. A madman will go through me like a fart through a colander. I could maybe give him a Chinese burn. See if that puts him off. He breaks in. Ah! Oh, you bastard! <laughs> and don't come back. <laughs> the man of the house. What am I supposed to do? Pick me mum up from work on me chopper. <laughs> <laughs> You're late, woman. <laughs> just, just get on. No excuses. You pedal, I'll steer. <laughs> hey, I change gear. My bike. The double glazing salesman coming round. Is the man of the house in? He's on his paper round. <laughs> I turn up in my short. What can I do for you? <laughs> well, I earn 40 pence a week. I could pay you off over 400 years. <laughs> if those terms are acceptable, see me after homework. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some worms to cut up. I'm a busy man. <laughs> Come night, fall them off scrumping. I've got to put food on the table. We go and stay with my granny. My granny is... Well, this is just one final thing. It's a weird thing that mums do, um, if your dad's a bit of a psychomaniac, that uh, mums will take the blame for things that happen in the house, you know, to stop the kids uh, getting it. And uh, my dad, was, uh, he'd discover, you know, that some minor misdemeanour had been perpetrated by person or persons unknown, you know. Someone that big was seen running away from the incident. <laughs> My dad had come in and he'd go, right, Hugh, which one of you has been feeding this cuckoo clock jam butties? <laughs> We'd all look at my dad. <laughs> my mum would come running in. It was me. <laughs> what? It was hungry. I fed it. <laughs> Have you thought of seeking psychiatric help? <laughs> all right, whose are these dirty magazines? They're mine. <laughs> Listen, Frank, I'll have to tell you, while you were out, I was jumping up and down on the kids' beds and they've collapsed. <laughs> yes. And I was pillow fighting on my own. <laughs> All the children's pillows have exploded. It's probably why my parents got divorced. I, mean, I, I had to divorce her. She was a fucking nutter. <laughs> she super glued the letterbox shut. <laughs> all the icing off the Christmas cake. <laughs> it was me. So I've got, I've got four sisters, two brothers. It was all a bit, bit of a mad thing. And we would go and stay with my gran. As, and my gran, would, we'd, she, my gran was, we, she was a lovely woman, but she was a terrible, terrible cook. 
She was, she was from the, she was from the, it all goes down the same hole school of cookery. <laughs> Get it down you, it all goes down the same hole. Thank you, Delia Smith. <laughs> sort of woman who knows where you can get fruit in brine. You know, so we aren't there. <laughs> So we'd all turn up, all seven, and me, me granny would say, Oh, I'm glad you kids are here. Um, I've got a bit of a treat for you for supper. We go, why? Has the cooker exploded? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've managed to get from the butchers his last cut of scrag end. <laughs> And for people who don't know, scrag end is the cut of meat for people who can't afford the hooves. <laughs> like, oh, lovely granny. You could never say it was horrible, you know. She, How's your scrag end? Like God has farted in our mouths. <laughs> lovely. Hey, and don't forget you, to eat your mash. I've made it with coffee compliment. <laughs> yes, we wondered what the magical ingredient was. <laughs> And if you finish that, you can all come in and have a quick lick of the giblets before bed. What do you think? <laughs> we'll be straight through, Gran. Straight through. Do you know, I like old people. I really... I feel sorry for old people in the summer, you know. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's the weather. You know, you ever look at the weather? We take the weather for granted. But it's in centigrade, isn't it? You, you sat there and it says, today is going to be 25 degrees. And old people don't know what bloody centigrade is, you know. 25 degrees to an old person... It's four below. <laughs> it is, that's why they're all out there in the summer in balaclavas <laughs> and double coats. I'm going to tell you what, George, I can remember when freezing was bloody freezing. <laughs> this feels like a summer's day. <laughs> George is there in his ice skates. Fucking tell me about it. <laughs> I was up at half four, gritting the path. <laughs> half four, you lazy bastard. Well, I like a bit of a lie-in. I'm 86, you know. <laughs> Frank Skinner. He's conducted some of the most memorable interviews in British television history. He's actually, he's pretty tough interview. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you're very lovely. Oh, you have to say that. I don't have to. You're... Stick around. <laughs> I don't want to hear this. Don't get touchy. So why is it that we'll always remember him like this? Oh, thanks for that, Frank. Get Frank on Paramount. Starts Thursday at 10.30, where comedy is Paramount. Back by popular demand. If I was ever stuck on a desert island, what two books would I bring with me? The first book I'd bring with me would be a big plastic inflatable book. And the second one would be how to make oars out of sand. He's the consummate Irishman. Ardlow Hanlon live Saturday at 10 past 11. Comedy is paramount. You can use yourself in some way, don't you? Chat Radio. Dave Pike. In the morning. Our sponsors, Kellogg's Nutigrain, have a new tastier bar. Why is this one so special? Well, Dave, it's the delicious twisted combination of real fruit and the smooth creaminess of yogurt filling. <laughs> That's funny. You say yogurt and I say yogurt. Sorry? Well, you know, like tomato, tomato. There's no tomato in it. Only fruit and yogurt. Let's take a call. Dave, Dave Pike. Hello, Mr. Polk. You're listening to Dave Pike with new Nutrigrain twists. The right mouthful in the morning. With the new Nokia Communicator, I do my banking using WAP services. Check my email on the move and send faxes from taxis. So there's no need to stop at the office after a meeting. With the Nokia Communicator, I connect on the move. Nokia, connecting people. Time Life Music presents Sounds of the 70s, the decade's biggest hits. By the rivers of Begin with 30 of the greatest hits from 1978 at the special price of $7.99. This classic two-CD collection includes mega hits from Susie Quattro, Blondie, Sweet, The Commodores, Smokey, and 10CC. I love it. These songs bring back great memories. 30 essential songs that define the year's biggest hits. Then audition other great albums from the 70s with no obligation to buy. Remember, Sounds of the 70s is not available in the shops. Call and order right now. To order Sounds of the 70s, call the number on your screen now.
<laughs> Ooh, give life a Caribbean twist. Fantasy Cakes Unlimited. Kitchen. Oh, completely useless kipper. Fred? Caroline. Unusual cats. Fiction. Clock. Utensil. <laughs> Flippers. Crikey. U boat. Clumpy. Fantastic coincidence. Us. Kinky. Fairy costume underneath kit. This week on Paramount. It's Daria. The new girl on Paramount, Daria, every night at 7. Daria, you're a chick, right? Why? You have a biology test today? Brand new to Paramount, it's Everybody Loves Raymond, Monday to Friday at 8. Why is how a woman looks the most important thing? If what a woman said was the most important, then the ears would be here. <laughs> you're kind of a big slut. Hiya. Uh, if you don't mind, I prefer the term swordsman. The new series of Just Shoot Me continues every night at 8.30. It's brand new to Paramount, the Frank Skinner Show, Monday to Thursday at 10.30 from Thursday. And remember, it could be you, eh? <laughs> Arthritis, that's a terrible thing. <laughs> Father Ted returns Monday to Thursday at 11. Who are you supposed to be, Ted? It's all done in the best. Kenny's back Monday to Thursday at 11.30. Goodbye! Emmy Norrisois and French, you know. And that's this week on Paramount. But I've done a couple of things this, this year which uh, well, I went to Australia and then I, 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 I took the plunge and I decided to move in with my girlfriend. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> I was always in two minds about settling down. Like, um, I think a lot of people, you, you, you know, you think, was, on the one hand, you think, yeah, it'd be great to settle down. You know, you, you get all your shirts ironed, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Joke, sisters, all right. Just... <laughs> it's a gig, not a manifesto. <laughs> just a joke. But then, on the other hand, you think, but what happens when you want to bring someone back? <laughs> so, joke, sisters, all right. I'm not suggesting you go home and go, excuse me, love, you couldn't make yourself scared. Could you? <laughs> I've only got lucky. <laughs> I'll, I'll need five minutes and some. <laughs> Two minutes, you know. You know me, 30 seconds. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's, I, don't, I, I was brought up with my sisters, you see, and I thought I knew lots about women. You know, you think, I've got sisters, I know women, and you don't, you know nothing. It was actually nice to meet a girl and not find every woman shows her displeasure at something you've done by trying to pin you to the ground and dribble spit into your face. <laughs> Which is what sisters tend to do for you. <laughs> Maybe that's where women are going wrong. You go, right, try and get out the washing up, will you? <laughs> I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> that shelf, eh? <laughs> just weird, you know. It's actually, people always try and tell you, you know, you, when, you, when you sort of moved in, they're going, good on you, mate. You know, swans mate for life. Swans, they mate for life. And you go, yeah, look how bloody bad tempered they are. Eh? <laughs> You've only got to get within 20 yards of that. Piss off. <laughs> Just because you married a wrong un. <laughs> I feel sorry for walruses. You ever see walruses on the TV? And the, the, the way it works with them lot is the best fighter gets to sleep with all the other walruses. You know, you look on the TV and there's all these little walruses with glasses and I'm an engineer t-shirt. <laughs> He's really pissed off about it. I was thinking, we are so lucky. Imagine that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Same rules apply. We're walking home from the pub. Oh, I'm sorry, love, you belong to Psycho Pete now. <laughs> Yes, I took a bit of a pasting in the car park. <laughs> he punched me in the face. I lost interest, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> he's coming round in 20 minutes in his Cortina. <laughs> I wouldn't argue with him. He's really handy. <laughs> the only women you ever get to sleep with are, are men who, who's, you know, men and women whose husbands or boyfriends you could, you could beat up, you know? I'd have a harem of old age pensioners. <laughs> Doris, Ethel and Elsie. The spoils of war. <laughs> and if your Archie wants any more, he knows where to come, all right? <laughs> It'd be awful, wouldn't it? 
but it was. I, was, I, th- I didn't know anything about women. I, I, I think, you see, I see women as like an enigma, surrounded by a conundrum, wrapped in a duvet. <laughs> you know, they're like a Rubik's Cube. You get one side right and everything else is bloody wrong. <laughs> No, 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 no. I've changed my mind. <laughs> There's a book, isn't there? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. So well, I've been out with some women from bloody Pluto, you know? <laughs> what is a reasonable response to a man not telephoning you? Destroy all his belongings? <laughs> no, 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 no. You walk past a gang of skinheads, she's gone, who are you bloody looking at? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> if you don't piss off, my boyfriend's gonna kick your heads in. No, 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 no. <laughs> Is it only my girlfriend or does every woman love the heating on? What's that all about? <laughs> they bloody love the heating on, don't they? We say, oh, should we just take the chill off the room? <laughs> I think it's to keep us men subdued, don't you think? <laughs> They're saying, go on, love, get yourself down the pub. You're like, ah, no, I don't think I will. <laughs> I, I don't think I could make it to the front door. We, we couldn't turn the heating down a fraction, could we? I'm down to four stone and my bloody shoes are melting. I don't know what you're talking about. It's freezing. It's freezing. Go on, get yourself down the pub. I'm going to have a little sit in the fridge, I think. I'm going to have a beer in here. Oh. It's talking about, it's freezing. <laughs> what is it, 18, 90 degrees in here? The tea's bubbling in my cup. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, it's freezing. <laughs> it's like going up to the window in your underpants, don't you? Help me. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> it's bloody boiling in here. She won't turn the heating down. <laughs> Break a window. <laughs> Do something for me. <laughs> Even the cat's like, ah. <laughs> Loosen his collar. <laughs> Bloody boiling! <laughs> Shave me. <laughs> Shave me. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's freezing! <laughs> if you're going to be like that, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I've put the electric blanket on. <laughs> you haven't. <laughs> There'll be nothing left of me. <laughs> There'll be Betty in a pair of damp underpants tomorrow. <laughs> Carrying me coffee one-handed. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> ashes to ashes. Mr. Piddle, good riddance. <laughs> You're talking about it's freezing. <laughs> women. Always reckon, always reckon you can tell when your girlfriend has stopped trying in the relationship. It's when the bra and knickers stop matching, isn't it? <laughs> right? That's a little bit of a giveaway. It's when you meet them, it's lacy this and lacy that. A few months down the road, it's bloody grey this. <laughs> Baggy brown, that. <laughs> Where did those knickers come from? <laughs> I smuggled them in under the hours of darkness. <laughs> I like to be comfortable in my own home. <laughs> How bloody do you? They're yeah, the bloody good knickers, these. <laughs> Ten years I've had them. <laughs> I see no reason to throw them out now. I like the crotch here, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And they, were, you, they wear these, you wear these all-in-one jobs, Nicky Panty, you know, the, with the, body, the clippy thing, you know, the all-in-one thing, which, that clip is right in the wrong place, isn't it? It's right where the action is, isn't it? You should move that clip. You're always worried you're going to cause damage or a, a bald patch. <laughs> you know, you know. They'll have to comb it over before they go out. Hold that taxi. <laughs> and are, they, are, they, are those things supposed to be up the crack of your arse? <laughs> are they supposed to be? You must feel like you're being permanently thrown out of a nightclub. Isn't 
walking around going, all right, I'm leaving. Get your filthy hands off me. Don't want to drink in your poxy club anyway. Thank you very much. No one around. When you're trying to undo those blooming clippy things, right, you get no help, do you? A little bit of help would go a long way there. But no, what you get is, let's just see how you get on with that. <laughs> Me old mate. <laughs> What's the combination? <laughs> is it four to the left, six to the right? <laughs> Ooh, what most men think is, oh, that requires a little bit of the old brute force. So you start yanking on it. <laughs> He panics. <laughs> All that happens is the shoulders don't... Stop it! What? Stop laughing! So... That's another thing, isn't it? They, and, they, and, and they have cats. Women have cats. And they don't tell you. They, you. they bring cats with them who they really like. We have to fight for affection. So it's me, I tell you, the other day, me and the cat were sat on the couch waiting for our tea, right? <laughs> I, said, I said, what am I having for tea? She says, you're having beans on toast. I said, what's he having? Mackerel in an ocean chowder. <laughs> well, that can't be right. Skinheads on a raft, mackerel in an ocean chowder. <laughs> He's like, well, you've either got it or you haven't. <laughs> So I don't keep, I, she keeps the cats. I've got, I've got goldfish. I decided to keep these little goldfish. I thought, want my own little pets, you know. They're bloody hard to keep. They're supposed to be hardy, but I'm slaughtering mine by the thousand. <laughs> Thank God I didn't decide to keep horses. They're a big bloody pile of them. <laughs> yes, there have been some teething problems. <laughs> in the stables. <laughs> the horse helps. Be... I must have spent 200 quid on goldfish. They're only a pound each. <laughs> I had to stop naming them. I got to George the Ninth. <laughs> Awful. I got one of them. He's a really little hard bugger. He's only about that big. And he keeps pecking all the other ones. He keeps going and pecking. And, and, and you feel so impotent, you know, because there's nothing you can do about it. Because A, he can't hear you if you're shouting at him. And B, he's forgotten it five seconds later. <laughs> he hey, no pecking. Nah, right, no pecking. That's the house rules. He's worth bloody pecking. <laughs> No pecking, right, no pecking, gotcha. Everyone, no pecking. I haven't pecked him before. <laughs> He's a nutter. I have to flick the glass. You're not supposed to, but I have to to get, you know. I'm like, I think it's like he has been tangoed. It's up to... <laughs> he comes up to the front of the glass as if he can have me. <laughs> did you just bloody flick that glass? <laughs> I'm going, yes, I did. Hey, and watch this. Yeah, I've turned the oxygen off, haven't I? <laughs> so less of your insolence. I reckon they try and eat the little ones when I'm away. So I've worked that out. Because if I just walk past with a suitcase, all the little ones come to the front of the glass going, oh, you're not going, are you? <laughs> they're all looking at me and licking the lips. They're making chips in the ruined castle, you know that, don't they? <laughs> calm down, calm down. Put your back, it's fucking life and death in here, you know. It's terrible. We should have had, we should have had like at school, you know, we had sex education. We should have had like six months on cat care and, uh, you know, just, and six months on foreplay because that's the bloody hard bit, isn't it? Foreplay. I think that's why men skip it. It's, it's, it's too hard, you know, because we've got a time difference with foreplay, haven't we? Because women need bloody ages, don't they? Like minutes sometimes. <laughs> It's too long, because most men only need <laughs> that long. Yeah, well, I'm ready. 0.7, my fastest yet. <laughs> what about yourself? 10 minutes? Oh, shit. I'll go around the block. I'll get some milk. Better ready when I come back. And they should teach you how to sleep with someone. You know, when you... I don't mean sex, I mean sleep. You know, when you get a chance to meet your girlfriend and, and spend, like, all night with her, it's a beautiful thing, you know, but if you're in a single bed, you can't get any kip, can you? You like that? Hello. <laughs> you don't stand a chance. You know, crikey, we're not two pieces of Lego, are we? Do you think we should sleep top and tail? <laughs> don't know if you love me, it has to be face to face. You go, but we don't, we don't fit together. <laughs> I mean, I, I should have holes here. <laughs> One person should have a nose, the other one shouldn't. <laughs> and when you're breathing in, they're breathing out. <laughs> that, 
That's pure carbon dioxide. I'm breathing air. <laughs> yeah, fall asleep, you bloody kill me. <laughs> Asphyxiate. And, and what do you do with this arm, eh? There's always an arm left. <laughs> Isn't it? Yours, basically. You go in, are you comfortable? No, I'm bloody not comfortable. <laughs> Do you seriously think if I was on my own, I go, here's for a good night's sleep? <laughs> and the twitch, the bloody twitch you didn't even know you had. You've never twitched in your life. Someone lies beside you, just, just sort of nodding off. <laughs> it's like a spasm, isn't it? Goes to the leg, doesn't it? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't bloody know, do I? I never twitched till you showed up. I was trying to disguise it. Oh my goodness. Just off to the toilet. Well, don't take the duvet with you. Chance would be a fine thing getting it off you, you vice finger. It's freezing. Oh, that's what it is, is it? <laughs> Silly me, it was just sweat, I thought it was. And with, I don't mean to be rude. But with oral sex, right, how long are you supposed to do that for? I mean, I know you've got to do it longer than you would, say, over a stamp. <laughs> I know. But, because, like, for women, you're OK. You've got an end with oral sex, haven't you? You sort of, you know what you're aiming for, don't you? <laughs> it's like, ta-da! But for men, there's no end, is there? It just goes on and on and on. It's five more minutes. Five more minutes! I'm gonna have to cancel the milk soon. I only asked you back for coffee. I've been here a week. Let me go. I've got chap lips. So have I. <laughs> I don't mean to be disparaging about love and stuff. I was just, you know, about golf. It's an amazing thing when you, when you do fall in love, you know? You, you see a girl across the crowded room and, you, and your eyes meet and, and you widen and you think, oh, wow, you and me could have some great rows. <laughs> I could make you the unhappiest woman alive. <laughs> what do you say? It's a fear, isn't it, when you, when, you, when you get together, you've got to split up and stuff. It's a weird, it's a weird concept for men, that when, when you split up with your girlfriend, why is it the next time you see her, she will be 50 times better looking than you ever knew her to be? Because when you split up, it's all tears and snot, you know. And, and she's upset as well, of course. <laughs> Just as... And then you see her again, she's bloody gorgeous, isn't she? And they can't wait to tell you what a great time they've had as well, since they kicked your shabby little arse out of the relationship. <laughs> oh, it's awful, isn't it? They go, oh, I'm glad you're at this party. I've been dancing till dawn. Fucking hell, you. <laughs> My new boyfriend's penis, so large. <laughs> when he gets an erection, we both faint. <laughs> oh, well, as long as you're happy. As long as you're happy. And then you find yourself as a man, don't you? Five o'clock in the morning, some seedy little bed sit. You're on your own, smoky old room, the sun coming through the curtains. You've got a bottle of brandy in one hand and your dick in the other. <laughs> Fucking women. They get you addicted to fresh milk and clean sheets, and then they fuck off. <laughs> Your life is different. Till Christmas is not what it used to be. It's, it's you're lucky if you've got a bloody turkey burger. It's, you're a Christmas cracker. You're wedging it in a door. You pull it. The door wins. The door's got a hat on. <laughs> the door won't let you play with his toy. You 
fucking whip it. <laughs> I'm gonna wank myself into a coma. Do you know what? I wonder if anyone has ever wanked themselves into a coma. <laughs> I mean, I've had a bloody good go. To... <laughs> See a scene in the hospital, I'm sorry, your son has wanked himself into a coma. <laughs> yes, you shouldn't have left him alone on his own at 15 <laughs> with a load of dirty magazines now. We couldn't save the penis now. <laughs> it's in tatters. Yes. He's had a damn good go at it. He's like, ah. Oh, If you could just play a few of his pop stars on a tape, we'll try and bring him back. <laughs> but they say men should cry more, don't they? This thing that we should cry more as men and, and maybe be more, insen maybe more insensitive. That's wrong. <laughs> I don't think we could achieve that. <laughs> maybe be more sensitive. Is that right, Joe? Yeah. Fucking <clears throat> too pretty thing. But we should, we should cry more. And I was thinking that men should, men crying is such a, a weird concept, you know. I'll tell you the story. Me and my girlfriend, we were on holiday in America, in New York. And um, we lost each other for half an hour. We completely lost each other. What happened was that we were walking down Fifth Avenue together. She saw something in a shop, fucked off. <laughs> I carried on walking. I was talking to some old lady for half an hour. So we'll go to the Empire State, then we'll get a bite to eat. Who the bloody hell are you? She was, that sounds great. And I lost my girlfriend, and I couldn't find her anywhere. And, and I was looking for her, and you freak out, you don't want to lose your girlfriend, especially not in New York. And I was, couldn't see her, couldn't see her. And eventually, after like half an hour, I saw her. She was over the way, and, and she was walking up, and then she saw me, and she ran towards me. And I, and I ran to her, and as she ran, I got closer, she started to uh, cry her eyes out, you know, she was sobbing. She goes, I thought I'd lost you. And tears were rolling down her face. And I did what any man would do in that situation. Basically, I blew my bloody top. Because <laughs> that tends to calm a situation. <laughs> You've got someone in distress, start shouting. <laughs> Where were you? Where was I? <laughs> I was on the agreed route. That's where I was. <laughs> you bloody magpie. <laughs> you see something glittery? You're off. <laughs> and chuck something else in, completely unrelated, really freak them out. And you leave the car seat all the way forward, don't you? <laughs> do you think I like driving with my knees in me gob? <laughs> and what are you cleaning the windscreen with? A toffee apple? <laughs> I get in, it's all bloody smeary. Because men are so anal about their car windscreens, aren't they? It all mists up, and the girlfriend and the wife goes, and she says, don't you dare touch that with your greasy little hands. We'd rather drive in that little letterbox, wouldn't you? Two inches of vision, right at the bottom. I can see perfectly well, thank you. I'm saving myself four seconds travelling time here, small risk of your life and my life. It's bloody worth it. One dot, dot, one for each eye. I can see perfectly well, thank you very much. And bang! Oh, bloody talking to you. Look, I crashed into that. <laughs> crashed into that bus. See, over an airbag. Talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Airbags are strange things, aren't they? I always think, like, you know, you, you think to yourself, it's just a bag of air, you know? And uh, surely it can have any shape you like. I mean, I'd like an airbag in the shape of two large breasts. <laughs> Because if you're going to go, you might as well go in style, eh? <laughs> go bang! Oh! <laughs> Ambulance drivers, can I cut you free? No, I'm fine, thank you. I'm really quite comfortable. Because <laughs> if they want men to drive careful, they should make an airbag in the shape of a big hairy bum. <laughs> you go, ah. Let's take it nice and slow. <laughs> 20 mile an hour is plenty fast enough. Oh. <laughs> you had an accident, you keep your gob shut, wouldn't you? Do you have an accident? No. 
to play. And it's like the, like the car horn, you know, you think on a car, that's what I think causes road rage, this car horn, it's so aggressive, bah, 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 just makes you freak out. They should have a car horn that is so thoroughly embarrassing, you don't want to use it. It would kill road rage dead. Someone cuts you up, you go, oh, you, oh, hey. Like something naughty had on his car. <laughs> I'm very angry with you. <laughs> but I was thinking to myself that on the on the crying thing that if as if my girlfriend had ran to me crying her eyes out, I thought I'd lost you. Imagine if I'd have started crying myself with a bloody got nowhere. <laughs> I thought I'd lost you as well. <laughs> we thought we'd lost each other. <laughs> Americans running up, were you attacked? Were you mugged? No, I went off walking. She went into a shop. <laughs> was talking to some old lady for half an hour. You dickhead. <laughs> You'd be thrown out the country, when you? Don't come back. I was very frightened. <laughs> she had the money. <laughs> what I learnt there, though, was whoever cries first, they get all the blooming sympathy, don't they? The looks I was getting, people were going, you bastard. <laughs> she ran off. And I won't have any of it now. That's it. I know this now. My girlfriend never comes and has a go at me and says, hey, Jeff, come on, look what's going on. It's, it's Christmas. There's no card from you. There's no present from you. There's no nothing. What's going on? I just go. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm a failure. She goes, oh, come on, it's not so bad. <laughs> It is to spend your present money on beer and fags. <laughs> Did you? Never mind. Why don't I buy you a little present? <laughs> if you really want to. <laughs> I would quite like a car. <laughs> well, you can piss off. <laughs> America's nice. America's a great place. It's weird. You speak the poshest you've ever spoken when you go to America. People come up to you and go, hey, I really like your accent. You're like, ah. Oh. oh, really? <laughs> Oh, no, really? What do you think of America? I find it rather spiffing. <laughs> My girlfriend's going, you had a stroke? <laughs> no? I'm talking to the Yank. <laughs> Everyone says about America, they say, oh, I, it's all right. They're very superficial, though, in the United States. They're very superficial. And you go, yeah, of course they are. But then I'd rather be told to have a nice day by someone who doesn't mean it than told to sod off by someone who does, to be fair. You've got to get this piece of... Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to me. Thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it. All the food. Have a good year. Thank you very much indeed. Take care of yourselves. Thanks very much. Thanks. Right, there's more stand-up on the way to the Paramount Comedy Channel with David Baddiel wrapping up the weekend with too much information next.